Uh, hello, class. Welcome back to chemistry. Welcome back to another week. Uh, today we are going to start the mole and learn all about that. Uh, but before we go too far, I'm going to pass the papers out to you. Um, and we're going to take a moment and just kind of see if you can um, like know what each of these numbers mean. So obviously like a dozen means 12. So talk with your lab buddy there that's next to you and see if you can come up with what each of these mean. So I'm going to pause the video and we're going to take a second and do that. So let's just, just talk about what all these numbers mean, these words that mean numbers. Okay, ready? Pause. Okay, so hopefully you got a lot of these. Like we remember the octet, it represents eight. A baker's dozen represents 13. A soloist is one. A gross, anybody, is 144. A pair is two. A score is uh, 20 years, I think, or 20. A uh, kilo means 100 or a thousand, a few, this is up to debate, maybe three or four, centuries, a hundred, grand is a thousand, quintet is five, quads is four, great gross, anyone is a dozen uh, grosses or 12 times 144. So those are all um, different words that mean units. And today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of explore how the mole um, is a way of counting things and how a mole is, is how we kind of view things in chemistry. So we always say, if you don't know what to do in chemistry, just randomly find moles and usually you are correct. Okay, so by definition, the mole, abbreviated MOL, which is perhaps the worst abbreviation of all time, but when you think about it, like M is meters, you can't really have that one. MO is molybdenum, so like MOL is what we have left. So if you want, you could just write the whole thing out, MOLE, or you can abbreviate MOL. So by definition, the mole is the SI unit for the amount of stuff. Okay, it's how many substances, it's the number of the substance in one mole. It's how sub chemists count things. And one mole of anything is always 6.02 times 10 to 23rd things. So this number by definition is called Avogadro's number. So by definition, whoops, by definition, I don't need that right now, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. So one mole of an element would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So that's the thing that makes up one mole of an element. Elements are made of atoms. And then 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules would be for a compound or formula units or other things that we call, call you know, things that are bonded together. So by definition, a mole is the number of entities in one mole, which is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. So um, now this number is ginormous. If we were to write this number out, and I think it's probably important, so I'm going to have you try. I might even pause the tape and make you write it out, but it's so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is actually six zero two zero 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 zero. It just keeps going and going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Pow! Okay, so if you keep track of things, this is the actual size of the number. So like right here is thousands, right? And this would be millions and then billions and then trillions. And then what is it like quadrillion, quintillion? And this is 602 sextillion. It's huge. Okay, it's so big. Look, this is such a big number that one mole of oranges, if you had a mole of oranges, would cover the Earth's surface to a depth of nine miles. This is almost silly this is ridiculous if you stacked one mole of notebook paper it would take you 5800 years traveling at the speed of light to reach the top of the stack come on really um, if you were given a mole of dollar bills at the beginning of the universe and you immediately began spending money at the rate of one million dollars per second you would have about 190 billion trillion dollars left crazy that's just insane. But one mole of hydrogen, and I have some moles, and I'll probably pass them around. Like these, these are moles right here. Like this, this is just one mole. And so that's the same number of, of atoms present that would cover the earth, you know, 
nine miles deep if they were oranges. And the thing is, it makes it this way because atoms are so small. So it takes a lot of them to make up one mole. Okay, so it's really interesting. So why is this number so big? Well, the elementary entities, atoms, molecules, or whatever, are really, really tiny. So I'm going to take a moment and pass some moles out, and you can explore what a mole actually looks like. If you have a mole, you are literally holding in your hand this number of entities, this number of atoms or molecules. Okay? So when we talk about fundamental particles, this is just more like, you know, atoms are made, elements are made of atoms. Molecular compounds, these are molecules. And sometimes with with ionic compounds, you're going to see this word formula units. And I'm just telling you that these basically for our purposes, these things are kind of the same. They're different, but they're particles. These are all particles. These are all really small, tiny things that you can't really see. It takes a lot of them to make one mole. Okay, now the big thing that you should be able to do is a mole conversion. So mole conversion is going to use dimensional analysis, which we've already done. And dimensional analysis is a way where we use the units to cancel things out. So we've already talked about this before, where if you have like 2x divided by an x, the x's cancel out. So that's kind of the concept in mole conversions, except the mole conversion, what we're going to use is Avogadro's number. So you're always going to start with some known amount. So in, in this case, <clears throat> the known amount is 2.59 moles of copper. Okay, you're going to make your little bridge. This is how we know things. And then we're going to use this conversion factor. One mole is equal to this many atoms because it's how many atoms are in one mole. So we know that since the unit here is moles, we're going to try to set it up so one mole is down here because that way they'll cancel out. And then we're going to put Avogadro's number up here. Now, when you plug this in your calculator, um, so you need to make sure, let me get my calculator up. Oops, there it is. Okay, you need to make sure it's using a uh, scientific calculator So, because you have the exponents, but you're going to type in uh, 2.59 times 6.02 and then times 10. Whoops, no, I did it wrong. I'm not, I know how to use my calculator. 2.59 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals. Yeah. So I would use a scientific calculator, but that's going to be 1.59 times 10 to the 20. I do have to count all those zeros. So I think it's probably 23rd. It would be 24 atoms present, probably. <laughs> so we're going to try it with our actual calculator. Um, so we'll pause, and I'll, I'll show you guys how you can actually store this number in your calculator so that it becomes really easy. This video is great. OK, let's keep going. Um, now, sometimes you're going to run into this type of problem where you are given, um, like, a value and then you're going to ask like an individual thing so the formula like, like an h2o here um the two represents there's actually two moles of hydrogen so all the subscripts in a formula are actually saying there's two or four or one so for example i have two na's one sulfur four oxygens so when i ask this question of how many much how many atoms of oxygen are present in 1.5 moles of caco3 you're going to use this this three at some point in this problem. So let me show you how to do this one. So you're going to start with 1.5 moles of CaCO3. And then for every one mole of CaCO3, do you see how there's three moles of O? And that's just right there. It tells you. And then for every one mole of O, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So in your calculators, you would type 1.5 times 3 times Avogadro's number, and that would give you your answer, which my calculator isn't working right now. So there you go. So we'll probably pause the tape and make sure everybody gets the right answer. Okay, and this last one, let's let's totally pause the tape. And let's totally make sure you get this one. So how many moles are present in this many molecules? So how do you set this one up? 
Okay, so it looks like this. So move this out of the way. 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And there's 6.02 times 10 to the 24th third molecules in one mole. So this time what you're going to do is you're going to divide this number by Avogadro's number and that'll give you your answer. So we'll try all these. All right, I think we're going to practice a little bit. We're going to watch a cool video that explains the mole concept and we're going to spend some time just working with our lab partners. Okay, the end.